Hey everybody, welcome to Anarchy, the podcast about anime with two brothers. I'm Ben. And I guess I'm a dragon. I don't know. Wow. Kind of sprung that on me. So wow. I'm going to be lazy. I'm just a dragon. Just a dragon today. I'm a scaly. Can we go back? Can I be a scaly? Is that okay? A scaly? I don't know. Is that a dragon slur? Could that's be. Like a furry, that's like a furry, but a dragon. Scaly. You know, you say that, and I feel like you made a joke, but I can't I, actually no, tell. No, it's... No, no, it's it's very real, I'm afraid. Of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah. Daily, it's like a furry, but 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 a dragon. I've learned something today, and I am worse off for it. I mean, that's fair. Thanks. Well, what have you been up to since last we spoke, besides learning weird terminology? <laughs> As if I learned that in the interim and not a thousand <laughs> years ago. Uh, let's see. I've uh, been playing some Persona 5. Well, my wife has been playing Persona 5. Oh, yeah. She like it as much as my wife does, you think? Yeah, no, it's pretty solid. The music gets really repetitive. Yeah, but it's good. It doesn't grate on you, but it does get stuck in your head if you're not baby, actively baby, playing baby, it. Baby, 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 baby. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, gosh. The new magic set just came out today, so I've been playing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been playing some Fall Guys, and I've been playing some uh, some uh, Among Us, like everyone else on the internet. Good. Hey, so speaking of gaming on the internet, are you going to buy the new graphics card? Probably not. It's been making all the splashes. Yes. I mean, I might buy one at some point, but I don't see any reason why I need to right now. What about a PS5? Uh, we're going to try and buy one, yeah. I'm actually considering getting one. I'm going to get I'm not going to get one with an optical drive because I don't really need it. I am going to get one with an optical drive. Would you like to know why? Why? Because I've learned and this may be completely inaccurate because I didn't watch the actual press release. But people who did and I mostly trust say that the PS5 is supposed to be backward compatible with all previous PlayStation versions. That's not correct. It's not backwards compatible with four. Uh huh. With the PS4. And backwards compatible with anything that is on the PlayStation shop, because I think it does the thing where if you put in an old disc, it will see if the PlayStation network has it and then you can download it. But only if it's already been upgraded to PS5. You can't just pop in the old Crash Bandicoot disc and run it off of the disc that it will not do. Hmm. That's I think Xbox is kind of the same way. They're doing the same sort of thing where it's like semi backwards compatible, where if there's a new version that's already been ported, it will do it maybe for free. Okay, but it's not really backwards compatible. Well, if you don't get one with an optical drive and you pop, how do you get your old library on there? Well, I don't care if it's if it's a downloadable game, it'll just do it or you can. just. I do care because I don't want to pay again. Well, then get an optical drive. I don't care. Also, most PlayStation games download them, install themselves onto your PlayStation anyway. That's kind of a moot point. I I get it. But if it was truly backwards compatible with all previous versions, it'd be a no brainer. I'm a little less thrilled about it now. Yeah, it it is not. You can't put in Final Fantasy seven and just play it. It does mean that I can now justify buying something for Final Fantasy seven Redux remake, whatever they called it. It it was. It was fine. I, I did not beat it. It just made me want to play Final Fantasy 7. So I played Final Fantasy 7 instead. Well, guess what I've been playing the last couple of weeks? Uh, not Final Fantasy 7? Fall Guys? No. Older than that. Tomba 2. No, not Tomba 2. I've been playing Warcraft Classic. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait, that's not older than Final Fantasy 7. No, but it's older than Fall Guys. Oh, that's right. Most things are. I did log in to World of Warcraft proper. Okay. For one reason only. Okay. And that was to get my old character that I spent eight years on uh-huh. back on the armory so I could download a 3D object of her and maybe I can print her out. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. So I downloaded 60 gigabytes worth of game data just to do that. We all have our hobbies. We do have our hobbies. I mean, I did spend like two days building the broken token for uh, Twilight Imperium. Well, a lot of small wooden boxes. Oh, I bet. I have been watching ReZero still. Have you been keeping up with that? Nope. Mm. Am I missing anything? Well, it is much more involved than the last couple arcs. That's but nice. I wouldn't say I that it's like engaging. 
So he's in a time loop, as he does. And as you do. he's been stuck in this time loop for quite a while. I mean, in one way, I like a longer time loop. He has died several times. And in this particular arc, he is seems to be stuck in a no-win situation. I have a strong feeling that it's going to be a case of deus ex machina or witch ex Very machina, likely. I guess. Maho ex machina. Yeah, that deus will save him. Maho? I hope not, because it would be interesting. I mean, it does time loop puzzles fairly okay, and it would be kind of interesting if you get into a sort of, the way it does make it sort of time loop, which is you have to decide between a couple different shitty scenarios. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Make your character make a tough choice. But, you know, it's ReZero, so somehow I doubt it. I mean, he is presented with essentially three different ways that his current loop is going to end terribly for somebody. Yeah. I don't think the show is going to say, well, he has to pick one of the three. He's going to find a secret fourth option. Of course he will. Of course he will. Because it's not great. It's fine. ReZero is fine, so it'll have some stupid way to get him out of it. Yeah, and his personality keeps jumping back and forth between heroic and simp. Like, all the time. To be fair, it probably won't be him figuring out a way. It'll be one of the girls figuring out a way, and then he'll do it. Because they'll give him the answer. One of the girls will give him the answer, and then he'll be like, oh, I'll do that. If by girls you mean witch, probably. Yeah. Because the witches have shown up, so. Yeah, I have seen that, and, you know, witches do make, does make me more interesting in things. Like, as soon as a witch shows up, I'm There are I'm several witches. Down. There are several hey, witches. Hey, why is Madoka Magica called Madoka Magica and not get witch or die trying? I don't have answers for you, but it's because we live in a fallen world. Yeah, see, that, that, that's my argument. <laughs> oh, uh, did you hear about the new conspiracy going around Hyrule? What is it? Yeah, it's the G Anon. I hate everything about you right now. Yeah, I stole that from somebody else. I'm sure you did. It's still a good joke. You can see, it's like Q Anon, but if, when you spell it, spells Ganon. You get it? Yeah. yeah. Anon. Thanks. And Ganon. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. OK, well, I've also been reading Dune, so that's nice. Yeah, actually, fun thing. I don't like Dune at all, but oh, fair enough. I will have to say I watched the trailer. Yeah, and I don't think I've ever seen, at least in the trailer, someone take the way I read the book right out of my head and put it in a screen. Like, every, no, it's nice. It's everything nice. about that trailer is exactly how I would imagine all of that being. Yeah, no, it looks good. So um, I'm reading Doom for the first time. I like it. I think it's pretty. It, I mean, it's definitely good. And I see why it's got the reputation it has. So it it has its good points. However, I still think the alternative title should be Gary Stew and his Desert Planet Vacation. That's so this is fair. <laughs> uh, I have heard that it's, you know, you know, kind of kind of got that Ender's Game thing where Magic Boy solves all the problems. However, a couple things help save it from that. One, it's mostly from his parents' perspective, and I like that because they're just like, what the fuck is going on with our kid? Why is he baller and crazy? How far along are you? I'm two-thirds of the way through. Hmm. So it's mostly from the parents' point of view, so I, I like that. Uh, he is not, the narrative does not follow him directly. The narrative mostly follows his parents. That And that helps put an extra spin on it. And also the fact that he is in track so far in the book, trying to avoid him being the god emperor of all everything through, you know, purging the galaxy. And I kind of like that, too. So I, 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 I enjoy these. It helps put a twist on just it being, you know, a Gary Stu type problem. Also, he is maladjusted and miserable, so he's not. <laughs> I like the world that Herbert sets up in that book. I like oh, for sure. most of the characters. I just don't like him. I mean, that's fair. That, that's what it boils down to. Well, again, it's kind of nice because it, it, it's about him, but it's not about him through his narrative stream. Yeah, it's mostly through the narrative stream of his mother. I, so I call it the fault in our stars principle. If I read a book and I really wish that the main characters would die already, then I should probably not read that book. Uh, that's fair. But in Duden's case, I finished it, at least the first one, because I realize how much of a watershed moment in sci fi that was. So I did not read the rest of them where people turn into sandworms. Yeah, I mean, one does not really need to read much more of Dune besides Dune, from what I understand. It's Sand. Like Mes Messiah and Children of Dune are supposed to be like, OK, but. And Spice. 
There's Spice and Spice and Wolf. We should just watch Spice and Wolf at some point. We could watch Spice and Wolf, Spork and Foof, as I call it, and I do enjoy it. Maybe we should watch that. It is an election year. That is topical. It, Economics. Econo- <laughs> it's the economy, stupid. I do have Spice and Wolf on DVD, I think. I would watch Spice and Wolf. I think I have it on uh, How many episodes is it? A mini. I think it's like 26. Spice and Wolf. Well, let's watch Spice and Wolf instead. I think we've gone about, gone about this in the wrong order, but okay. Well, we were going to watch Hanasaku Iroha, but you know what? That's long. So I'll watch Spork and Foof. Spork and Foof. Oh, yeah. I mean, we were gonna, how far did... We were going to talk about Dragon Maids or something, right? Well, hold on. Before we do, how far did Horo get on our on our waifu challenge? Didn't she win? I think she won, if I believe correctly. Let me uh, let me go take a gander at the old archives. Let's take a look here. I'm pretty sure it was Horo, which is a good reason. Aniki.fm. Search waifu. Waifu war. I didn't put spoilers on the page. I guess we'll never know. We'll never know unless we go back and reread it. It was Horo. Oh, well, there you go. It is Horo. So. Ha ha! All right. Uh, speaking of best girls. Speaking of best girls, how many best girls can you have in your small apartment? Yeah, it's all of them. All of the best girls. And one best boy. <laughs> this time we decided to watch Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Uh, though I like the Japanese name better because it combines the D and maid with D and dragon, so it's maid run. I'm a good fan. Maid or wrong. You gotta like those Japanese puns. It's a portmanteau, and I like it. Why don't you give us an a elevator pitch for this show? A dead eyed programmer gets a dragon maid. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's or, fair. Or, other elevator pitch sometimes a family can just be a programmer, a dragon, and a smaller dragon. I mean, why not? It's current year. It's 20 XD6. Yeah. Well, what'd you think of it? Oh, it was good. I liked it a lot. It was surprisingly deep. It is, isn't it? It I'd is. I'd forgotten how deep it. it could get. It's it's surprisingly deep little show. Which, for what it is, you would not expect at all. You'd either expect... You would not. ...light humor, which it does have. Yep. Or you would expect horny on the main... Which it does. Which it, th- and which it also has that they, too. They also have horns. So, yes. Yeah, it is horny and horny. But I found that overall, the show has all these different genres of humor in it, but they're all subdued. It knows its limits. Yep. So I appreciate that about it. My only complaint is I think it, it, it leans a little too much into some boob jokes, especially with poor Quetzalcoatl, but... That's what I was going to be. I was going to be world class is what I was going to be. Which is the best joke in the series. It's a very good joke. I had to pause and laugh for a bit. It was a very good joke. We have to talk about that in a bit. I think I ended up giving this a seven or an eight back when I originally yeah, watched I this. Yeah, I would. Yeah. It's a solid show. Like It's an excellent version of this genre of the of the sort of like young coma chill chillax show. Right. It's not like the wacky hijinks Yonkoma. It's like the more relaxing Yonkoma type show. It's relaxing while still being ironically somewhat believable. Yeah, I know. Right. I don't know if that's the source material. Very well could be. Or if it's Kyoto Animation putting their spin on it. Oh, this was Kyo Annie? It sure was. Oh, well, no wonder it's well animated. And. Is it a Yonkoma? No, I guess not. There's a second Perfect. season coming out next year. Oh, good. Isn't that nice? 2021 scheduled. I do like how instead of just saying Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid 2, it's Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. Like Sailor Moon. Dragon Maid Super. Supers. And I didn't realize my little sticker that says your waifu belongs in the trash is actually one of the dragons from Dragon Maid. Didn't know that, but now that I do, it makes me love my sticker even more. Wait, which dragon is it? It's uh the lowly. Oh, Kana? Yeah, it's Kana. Oh, or Kana. It's Kana just saying your wife who belongs in the trash. Oh, she's and saying she's it. Okay, that's right. fine. Yeah. Oh, no, no. So everyone should go watch Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid because it's adorable. And funny 
I wouldn't watch it with your mom. Everything with Kana in it is very non non beauty. Isn't it, though? The show is really similar to non non beauty, to be honest. Yo, Annie didn't do non non beauty, did they? I don't think so, but I mean, just the way the show is structured is very much like non non beauty. Got a lot of the same mood to it. Answer is no, they didn't. But yeah, you're right. It has a lot of the same character stylings. Actually, some of the same art styles. A lot of watercolors and stuff. Yep. yep. Very nice. But yeah, go watch that. Let's spoil some stuff. Not that there's a whole ton to spoil other than jokes. There are dragons and maids. There are dragons and maids. Some of them are maids. In fact, I think just one of them is maids. One's halfway a butler. We got a maid, a gamer, a lolly. Yeah. And then whatever the hell Quetzalcoatl is. Uh, a Skyma, right? Is she? A lust demon? Well, Skyma is just a familiar. Yeah. So I guess. Or uh, perhaps she's Hathor the cow goddess. Don't look that up. Or wow. do. It's, it's fairly tame. It's just weird. It's culture. Is it? I believe it is some someone's culture somewhere. That's fair. Well, let's talk about the only human of the group, Kobayashi herself. I like Kobayashi. She's kind of dead inside, and it makes me happy. (laughs) Wow. I wouldn't say (laughs) she's dead inside. Uh, She's not anymore, but she's a little. She's got the dead fish eyes, right? She has looked into the utter abyss. No, 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 no. no. That's Quetzalcoatl. She's the utter abyss. Wow. Ah, ah. Wow. Eh? Well, she's looked there, too. But she's looked into the deep, terrible abyss that is the life of a Python programmer. And she has seen what lies there. It's sadness. That's the answer. Being a programmer leads to sadness. It is drinking. Drinking. Uh, eating takeout every day. Never taking out your burnable garbage. Yeah. Having a dump for an uh, apartment. Yeah, that's yeah, how that works. Uh, let me just take a quick look around my office here. Oh, boy. I need yeah. a I need a dragon, it looks like. I mean, you've got a wife. She's not a dragon. I mean, you... point. <laughs> but I do like how she isn't just this flat character. I mean, she is, but that's neither, neither here nor there. She's not just this shallow character with no personality that's essentially uh, I just... I see what you did there, yeah, because did. she doesn't have breasts. Just the, uh, just the straight man of the group. She is there to sort of balance out some of the wackiness, but she's also the wisest person there, despite being the most jaded. Yeah, well, with 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 being jaded comes wisdom, whether you want it or not. Cynicism is the highest form of wisdom. I wish more people realize that. Not that I have any vested interest in people realizing that, but I do like how by the end of the show, like she has several character arcs. They're not very long because of the nature of the show, but. She doesn't just go from shallow to deep. It's more, we just learn more about her than find out that she was deep the whole time. When she cared to be. She does. I like the the small moments. She is very cynical and very jaded, and she doesn't have a lot of emotional uh, maturity. So a lot of the way that she communicates, at least to the audience, is through very subtle eye movements and stuff. Yeah. Which I I found very engaging, actually. It's interesting to have a main character of a show like this that's so introverted. There aren't many shows like it. No. By the end, that she, she realizes that not only does this new family that she has sort of acquired mean a lot to her, but she realizes that her actual family probably means more to her than she wanted to admit to herself. Yeah. What about Toru? Toru! She wants people to eat her tail. It's such a weird joke. An odd joke. It's an odd joke. And boy, is it the one thing they decided to make the running joke. Would you like to eat this really disgusting tail? <laughs> but would you, do you want to eat my meat? Toru is the titular dragon maid, though she's not very good at being an actual like classical Victorian maid, but rather a cosplay maid uh, of a French maid, um, which isn't really a real maid, though I don't want to discount that as a as an an appropriate interpretation of being a maid. But really, the the more true maid is, of course, the Victorian housemaid, though saying that there's just one type of Victorian maid is a little wrong. Uh, There's several different kinds of Victorian maids. I was going to see how long you keep that going. 
Well, you know, I do have Tonto Cuare, so I know all <laughs> sorts of maids, like the napping maid. Napping maid is the best kind of maid. maid. Yeah. Here's a question for uh, you, speaking of yes. maids. Is a napping maid one a maid who naps, or is a napping maid one on which you nap? Oh, could be on which you nap. I don't know. I've never figured this out. I've had that game for years. Still don't know. Which is it? I don't know. I'm going to go with the one which you nap. Hmm, okay. The lap pillow. You can buy those. You can, but why have uh, the imitation when you can own the real thing? <laughs> the real dragon. Uh, but Toru is what? She tries very hard. She's very impulsive, uh, but very friendly, even though she loathes all humans because they're in they're inferior. She all gets dragons. better about it. She does get better. I do like how they met. It is the drunkenly in the woods. Well, it's the stereotypical, you know, mouse with the lion's paw, except it's a sword in the back. Yeah, as you do. But in the first couple episodes, we're shown flashbacks of, yeah, she was there in the, the woods with a sword in her back and Kobayashi sees her when she's drunk. And we're just sort of left to infer that Kobayashi pulls the sword out and now they're friends. But then in the next to last episode, we find out that it wasn't just that. It's they both got drunk and had a grand old time just galling it up for like the entire night. They bonded. They did bond. It's probably the first time either one of them had had like a real friend. Yeah, at absolutely. least recently. I would agree. Considering Toru's dad's kind of a dick. He is. Toru is a green dragon, even though she breathes fire, which <laughs> broke my immersion. Wow. Are you pushing your glasses I mean, a little further up your nose? Come there? on. Uh, yeah. Well, actually. Yeah, well, actually, green dragons breathe a a acid. Poison? Poison. Uh, yeah, poison. Poison acid. Green Dagron. So the thing about her tail, let's talk about the thing about her tail. Yeah, she's got a tail. It's a weird joke. And somehow they still manage to make the joke. Then they show you the piece of meat from her tail. It looks disgusting on purpose. We are yeah. seeing Kobayashi's disgust at the disgusting piece of meat. And yet I, as the audience, still felt bad when she wouldn't eat it. Well, Toru just wants her to eat it so bad. But why? So bad. But why? I don't know. And just right off the bat, first like episode, we, we established yeah. this joke. She got a bit of Vor streak going through her, I think. A little weird. Yeah, I suppose so. Why don't we talk about Kana? Let's talk about Kana. All right, Kana. Dragon number two to show up. She's a baby dragon. She's a lightning dragon. She's got a little puffball tail and funny horns. And she's basically exactly like the little girl from Nundon Beauty. You may even have the same voice actress. I'm not positive. I think you. I, well, I know it's the same voice actress as the platelets from Cells at Work. Non Non Beauty. What's her name? I forget her name. Mm, no, she's not it. It's it's Renge. Yeah, Renge. Uh, the voice actress is Naganawa Maria. And she was not in Non Non Beauty. Sorry. Ah, uh, very similar voice. though. She is in Azure Lane. She's the USS Laffy. Well, that's nice. Mm hmm. But she's also the platelets and the platelets are adorable. Anyway, Kana plugs into the wall like a Tesla. Yeah, no, that she does. Bless her little heart. She's so cute. She is very cute. And if anyone is actually the straight man of the show, it's her. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> I just like the, the stoic way she approaches everything in life. And yet she's still so earnest. She is. And uh, let's see. She's a second, gra third grader, third grader, third grader. Because she wants to go to school, so she gets to go to school. So technically, she's older than Renge. I think she's older than all of them. Well, I mean, that's true. She's technically older than, <laughs> than Kobayashi, but... I don't think we're ever told how, how old she actually is. Better not to worry about it. She's probably like five billion. Uh, where's, that, where, where, where's that anime ages joke? Uh, bu, 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 bu. Are you talking about name? how Jojo is 17 years old? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. What's his name? The one that did the... Gosh, I can never remember his name. That did the what? You know, all the funny videos. He's a voice actor. He did the... Pro ZD? Did, you forgot his Pro name ZD, last time, it. too. I can never remember his name. It's not my fault. I hear it. Here we go. Here we go. Sosuke Bose is 12. <laughs> I know it. Have you never seen that before? <laughs> uh, not That's the, very true. Not that exact joke, no. Very accurate. I'll send I'm you a week baby. later with... Uh, I'm a thousand. It's either Gigguk or the Anime Man or somebody in Japan doing a quiz about 
ages and such. But you know, best not to worry about anime <laughs> ages. Anyway, Kana's adorable. Kana's great. And she's here to tell you that your waifu belongs in the trash. Well, she does belong in the trash. Ka- I do like the second episode where she shows up and she and Toru go and p- quote unquote play. That's funny. And I especially love the when they have to play it, when they decide to play at Kobayashi's level. Yes. And they're all sad and they're back hurt. <laughs> they're, they're just like, oh, uh. backs. <laughs> a plus joke. I'm here for it. Most of the jokes are A plus jokes. It's true. There are very few D minus jokes. I can think of a D joke. Is it? Is it Lukoa? Yeah, it's about Quetzalcoatl or Lukoa. See, she has very large breasts. They are so large. They are very large. Her back would be in lots of pain. Though I do wish we never see her dragon form. We don't. I think that's on purpose. Here's the thing about Lukoa. She is very well endowed. But unlike most series that have a character like that, everybody actually realizes how big they are. And, oh, yeah. And most well, people the, are actually like not OK with it. Yeah. All, all the dragons have very large. They're very, very well endowed. The joke is that they are size D for dragon for, for dragon. Yeah. And that's the joke. But she's size Q, I guess. Or I guess. Of course, I don't know Quetzalcoatl lore enough, like the actual like creature to know like what they're always referencing with her having gotten drunk. Uh, so we can look this up, though. It is a big, long story. I wonder if I'm uh, sure it is. I wonder if overly sarcastic productions did one on it. I don't know. Sarcastic. That's a, they did. Well, I'll link this 10 minute video on the, the myth of Quetzalcoatl oh, uh, in the show notes. So if you're curious, you can go watch that. This Wikipedia page is very long. I'm sorry. Oh, and that's why she's Venus, because she is the she is the evening star. OK, so that's why she's Venuvian. Uh-huh. Okay, So that's Venusian. So that's good to know. There are a lot of like very intricate culturally jokes with the dragons. They're a decent amount. Yeah, they definitely they definitely did their research when it came to came to the dragons. For example, Kana is supposed to be a dragon that is from the indigenous natives of Hokkaido called uh ushishir little island i guess too yeah uh dragon thanks toru is just a dragon yeah. elma is a water dragon lukoa is quetzalcoatl fafnir isn't a dragon but he does a lot of stuff after fafnir the wolf he's a big monster guy that's for sure oh oh crap fafnir was a, a dragon I'm mis- mem- misremembering things, apparently. He was the dragon slain by Sigurd. There you go. All dragons. All there. there he is. But one thing about uh, Lukoa that we have to talk about is the best joke in the whole show. Yeah. Because they spent a lot of time talking about or demonstrating how um, off-putting her assets are. Not only They're to... What's very distracting. What? Her little boy. Shota. That was pretty on the nose. A little, a little on the nose there, but yeah. Uh, and how, like, everybody else is is put off by this. Like, she always shows up to beaches in very skimpy outfits, and... She gets kicked out of multiple places for being too skimpy. But then she goes to the school, you know, sports day festival to cheer on yeah. Shota and all the other third graders. He has to do the, what is it, the, the treasure hunt part where yeah. he gets a clue... He's got to go find it, whatever it is, and bring it back to the table. And he just goes over, grabs Lukoa, brings her back over, and the, the judge, old man, just gives him a thumbs up, got it. And then we see what's on the paper. Got, got it in one. <laughs> World class. World class. Yep, got it in one. Not wrong. It was a well build up to do a great joke. I liked it. Poor Shota, though. I don't know if I feel bad for him or not. I do. You no do? one wants that. I guess not when you're... How old would that be? Uh, he was a sixth grader. He was a sixth grader? Oh. Yes. So he would be like 13? 12, uh, 12 cool. maybe? 12. In which case, he probably would want that, but he doesn't. He is on the cusp of wanting little, that, but not little, wanting to admit to anyone aggressive. that he, he actually wants that. Then we have Fafnir. Uh, Fafnir, we saw Gabriel drop out, and that is Fafnir. <laughs> 
It's pretty close, yeah. Yeah. He cares. Uh, he cares about his roommate whose name escapes me. It, it's nice. He hates everybody else, but he cares for his roommate. It's cute. Yeah. That's about it, though. Yeah, that's about it. He yeah. does hate all humanity. He is the comic relief. He's the he's the he's the dry comic relief. There's not much to say about that. Um, no, no, he's good at games. He's very good at games because he doesn't have to sleep. Uh, let me think what else. Uh, I do like uh, Kobayashi's co-worker who is roommate to Fafnir. I like how Toru at first thought that it was a romantic rival. But then it turns it out not. that no, it is a fellow maid enthusiast. Mm hmm. Because he is secretly a massive nerd in, in private. I do like how he's depicted as a massive nerd. I actually forgot for a couple times that he was the co-worker. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, a completely it's different person. character designs. Yeah. Uh, what about Saikawa? That's probably the most problematic character. Saikawa. That's, which... that's Kana's primary school classmate friend. Oh, She's in love with Kana. You think? Yes. Every time she touches her, she gets very thirsty. Extremely. Thirsty. I would say an another another name of this episode could be lollygasm, though. I don't like that phrase, so we won't use it. I'm, I'm going to cut that out. It's not it's not incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, here's here's it's a question for you. Incorrect name. So Kana goes over to Saikawa's house once and. Before they are interrupted, Kana actually pins Saikawa down to the floor to get closer to her. Yeah. Yes, I think she was going to literally eat her. Really? That's where I lean. The, she was going to eat her? Yes. I figured she was going to like lick her face or something. Yeah, it could be it too. If there were, if there were a problematic character, it's definitely Saikawa because that's yeah. weird. Because they're like yep. nine. Yeah. <laughs> And that's not no, okay. It's Japan. Japan's a little weird. Come on, Japan. Uh, we have yeah. we have Georgie, which is Saikawa's older sister, who is a maybe a bigger maid nerd than either Kobayashi or her coworker. Impossible. Really? You sure? Uh, because did, she lives it. I did really like that episode, aside from the weird Saika uh, Saikawa stuff. But the rest of that, a lot, the rest of that sort of like episode. As in happening, not like the whole episode was very was very choice. Just poor Toru getting drugged into this <laughs> made conversation that she actually knows nothing about. She just likes to clean and not really care much about maids themselves. She's not in for the maid lore. OK, she's just in for the maid look and the job, but not not so much the lore. So she's not a real fan. No, she's not real. I'm not a real what a fan. casual yeah, she's just cas a casual, as they say, casual. So I'm reading this Wikipedia page about Shota because he's the last human here. OK, um, yes. here's an interesting tidbit. Maybe this is further on in the manga and we'll see this next season. So yeah. spoilers for spoilers. But, come on. It's like spoiling non non beauty. So you heard that his family's a bunch of mages, right? Yes. And her dad might be Kobayashi's boss. Yeah, he's the director of the company. He designed the programming language they use based on magic from Toru's world. Huh. So. Well, yeah. If this is so taking is place. So is this show actually an isekai? Uh, this means that Python, the programming language, is an isekai. Yeah. That means I'm an isekai protagonist? I don't think so, no. Oh. Well, you've ruined my day yet again. First, you taught me about scalies or whatever you call them. And now I found out I'm not actually an isekai protagonist. Thanks. No, you were never an isekai protagonist. How do you know? I'll look at you. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, let's see. We're missing a dragon. We're missing Elma. Oh, yeah. Who just wants to eat snacks. Elma. We didn't get a lot of development out of her. Uh, she no, she just wants to eat. She just wants to eat snacks. She shows up. We have one episode where uh, there's a lot of conflict because she's of the different dragon faction from toru and then she just gets an office job with kobayashi even though she doesn't know what computers is yeah and from then on oh, she's just sort of used as background jokes yeah yeah 
Now, I will have to say that there is one thing about the show that made zero sense. What's that? Especially when it came to Toru. Why does no one her horns? That's a good question. Why does no one her horns? No one her horns. Well. Other people can disappear their horns. But no, no, no one her horns when it comes to Toru. Or Kana. Kana doesn't her horns either. No, no. Ka- Kana will hide her horns when she's at school. Does she? Her horns are not always there. Yes. I don't think I noticed that. Her horns are not always there, though they do blend into her hair. But no. When it comes to Toru or, or um, Lukoa, Lukoa is the same sort of way. No one's their horns. Well. No one their horns. Toru does have that ability to hide things. She does, but you can see the green shimmer. And she hides her tail and her wings often, but not her horns. Now, I will say that Lukoa has a pretty good excuse because ain't nobody looking up top when it comes to Lukoa. <laughs> They're all distracted a little bit. They're all very distracted. So that that we can that one we can head cannon. But uh, no one of her horns. That does remind me of Lukoa's kimono for the New Year's celebration. It was very good. <laughs> That's a good joke. That w- that was a good joke. <laughs> There are some decent breast jokes in the show, uh, but I do wish they would give that trope a breast. Wow. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, this is a very subdued show. And even though it does have all those jokes in it, they were all they could have done a whole lot more with them. Yes. And I feel it could have been a lot hornier and it's not. They're just like, which is nice. But it could be a little less horny, which I would have preferred. I can't speak on behalf of women because obvious. But I would be curious to find out if these are the types of boob jokes that girls make amongst themselves. Because they don't do they know. don't feel super horny, but they're still there. Who uh who wrote this? Who wrote this? Oh, uh, they don't have a real name. They do not have a real name. <gasps> the person who wrote this also wrote I can't understand what my husband is saying, which is an adorable show and everyone should go watch that. And Monster Musume. Really? Where is that? I guess so. No? What? This is. Well, let me see. Mangaka known for Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. I can't understand what my husband is saying, which everyone should watch. And Komori-san can't decline, which is also a four coma. We should watch I Can't Understand What My Husband Is Saying at some point, because this is a bunch of like two minute episode shows. So if we ever have a week where we have to watch something small watch that small well or we could watch kana she is small she is small and she plugs into the wall did i mention she plugs into the wall she just plugging the wall is very cute though i have to say that i think that this would make kobayashi's um electrical bill very high i do wonder about kobayashi's money she's got quite a bit well then again she has lived alone for a long time uh, in a modest apartment, and the only expense she really has is going out drinking every once in a while because she seems to have no life before this. Because she didn't go out with her co-workers much, except the one guy. Well, knowing this, knowing this pandemic, and knowing how much money I had before the pandemic, and how much money I have now mm-hmm. as in disposable income, even though nothing has changed except now I'm a complete homebody, I understand that if you have no life, you tend to have more money. Is that true? I don't I've had no I've had no life for six months and we have a lot more disposable income than we did in the previous six months. Well, I've had uh, no life for 36 years and I don't have yeah, money. Well, where's my money? Well, s- some of us aren't doing it right. Mm. All I have to say. I see how it is. Yeah. So what you're saying is I need a couple dragon maids and then my that's true. My money problems will just vanish. It will go away. Yeah. No, I mean, if you and I mean, to be fair, she also has a whole maid that she doesn't have to pay for. So that definitely helps. Yeah, that does help. But the maid is often going out to the market and buying stuff probably on a daily basis. Yeah, but it's like farmer's market vegetables. And you know how cheap farmer's market vegetables are? No, actually. Very cheap. I I do know that once harvest season rolls around, we're probably going to get like a bucket of corn for a dollar. God, I wish. Sweet corn, too. So much. I know. It's so good, and they just don't have it out here. You know what else they don't have out here? Apple butter. What? I know, right? Why? This is, this is like the home of apples. Washington is known for growing apples, and there's no apple butter. People here don't even know what it is. I thought it was civilized out there. You told me there were cities and roads and things, and you're telling me they don't have apple butter? No apple butter. What a travesty. They also don't know, they also don't know what a cicada is, so I mean... Oh, yeah, I remember that. Washington's an odd place. 
you know, we're an odd bunch. We know we know a smoke, though. So it's finally cleared up now with the rain. Oh, good. Though I wish I had a dragon to clear up the rain. But it's a little flashy when they do that. Is there anything else to talk about? Uh, the show is cute. It's pretty low key. Uh, it's well worth a watch. Um, I give it, you know, I unfortunately I do have to give it a D for dragon. But that's for dragon. Yeah, I have to say, I mean, I've seen this before. I knew some of the jokes. It's got pretty solid rewatch value, which yeah, I can't say for. A, show. I can't say a lot for a lot of comedy shows. And in fact, off the top of my head, the ones that I can say. Or have high re- rewatch value are all from Kyo Annie. And Non Non Biori. It's like this. Nichi I've Joe. technically watched Non Non I've technically watched Non Non Biori four times. Because I've watched it twice and repeat twice, so I basically watched it four times. I should go just go watch some Nichi Joe clips now. Uh like the Deer Fight. Uh the Deer Fight is not the best clip from that show. It's the God is Dead sketch. Alright, well now I gotta look this up. Now they keep removing it from YouTube. Got to get the long one. How long is the long one? About 30 seconds, but this will do. You'll get the gist. You've seen it. <laughs> well, Fair enough. <laughs> or my other favorite, and this one's about a minute. All right. Tinian Soccer. Oh, yes. I think I have seen this one. Yes. Let's blow our entire animation budget for the episode on this one one minute joke. Have we done Nichi Joe for the show? We have not. We should do Nichi Joe. <laughs> We should do it. Nichi Joe is good. It's a hard show to comment on because it would just be us talking about each of these sketches. Yeah. Although I did uh, did rank them all once. That sounds pretty good. It's that hand up at the end. The hand up at the end yeah. does it. <laughs> <sighs> There's so much good from there. This you show. go. Anyway. All right. Yeah. So uh, I don't think we have anything else to talk about since we've been reduced to watching Nichi Joe clips on YouTube. So uh, overall, I call it a good <laughs> day. This was, I think this was a good day. A plus experience. Uh, go watch Dragon Maid. Uh, is worth watching. It has maids and dragons and jokes about the pubes, you, as they say. There you go. And so. next time we'll watch Spork and Foof. Spork and Foof, also known as Spice and Wolf. Nah, I'm pretty sure it's Spork and Foof. Just like how it's how it's Tuli Dooley is Tora Tora. <laughs> All right. See y'all next time. Bye forever.